Synology NAS appliances have been the leader in the industry for years. And although they might have more apps, more streamlined software, and a robust ecosystem, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're the best value for your money. Welcome back to Mackie Tech. So my first Synology NAS I bought back in 2009, but for the life of me, I can't remember what model it was, but it was a two bay NAS and I used it mostly for hosting my own websites and cataloging my movie collection and learning about virtual machines and streaming media and music. Uh, in 2014, I next upgraded to another two bay, the DS214 Play. And in 2020, I upgraded again to the four bay DS920 Plus. So yes, you could definitely say that I've been a Synology loyalist for years. Their software is excellent. Their interface is smooth and the mix of first party and third party apps is really second to none. The challenge I was having with my DS920 is my 20 terabyte drive was starting to run out of space, especially since I was now using it more for my YouTube content. Uh, but I wanted something with more horsepower, faster networking, and something that was a little more robust so I could grow into it more. Now, instead of doing a review of the Ugreen that I bought, I thought it might be more valuable to kind of walk you through my decision-making process and why I chose Ugreen over upgrading to Synology's DS1525+, Plus, which is what I was eyeing, because I really did want to stick with their ecosystem. On paper, the DS1525 had solid specs with eight gigabytes of RAM versus the 920's four. It had a four core Ryzen V1500B CPU, and it had two uh, 2.5 gigabit networking ports versus the 920's one gigabit. But the first fly in the ointment I noticed is that the Ryzen CPU had no hardware transcoding, which is a step back from my six-year-old 920 Plus that had the Intel Celeron J4125 that did support hardware transcoding. Now, this wasn't a deal breaker per se, especially since I hadn't been using transcoding just yet, but I wanted to keep it as an option. On the plus side, the DS1525 Plus had a fifth storage bay, which I really wanted, and a handy PCIe slot if I ever wanted to upgrade the networking. So for the $912 on Micro Center, it seemed like a, a pretty good deal. But then in April of 2025, Synology got a little cocky and introduced a new policy that really burned my Pardon my French. The new policy basically said that any 2025 Plus Series NAS devices like the DS1525 Plus would only receive full features and official support when using Synology branded or Synology certified storage drives. Third party drives would still function, but certain capabilities like the very important storage pool creation, drive health analysis, firmware upgrades might be limited or non-existent, which kind of makes the system useless in my opinion. Now they've recently walked back this policy, but in my opinion, the damage had already been done. And as someone who has been a loyal customer for years, this was really disappointing and it pushed me to start researching alternatives like the Ugreen, which was a vendor who had been up and coming for about a year and they were really getting stellar reviews. The Ugreen DXP 1600 Pro was what caught my eye because it had six labeled drive bays versus the DS1525 Plus's five bays. And I say labeled because as you can see, I had to label my 920s because when you take them out or swap them out, it's very important that you put them back to where they were before, otherwise you're gonna screw up your whole system. The DXP 6800 Pro also had two 10 gigabit ethernet ports versus the 1525's 2.5 gigabit ports. The extra bay and the ethernet alone would have justified the $130 price tag difference of the Ugreen, but the Ugreen also had a 10 core Intel i5-1235U, which offers much better single core and burst performance, and best of all, had built-in hardware acceleration for media streaming. 
In benchmark comparisons, the i5 on the Ugreen significantly outperformed the Synology's Ryzen, both in single-threaded tasks and overall compute performance, giving it far more headroom for multitasking. For future proofing, that's huge, because as we all know, a NAS is an investment, and you want your investment to last more than one or two years to accommodate your workflow and workload. In addition to a significantly more powerful CPU, the Ugreen NAS includes two NVMe slots that can be used for caching or for full SSD storage pools, something Synology does not support. Even better, those NVMe pools can be used to boot alternative operating systems like Unraid or TrueNAS. For I.O., it also includes two Thunderbolt 4 ports, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and two additional USB 2.0 ports, giving it more than twice the I.O. options of the DS1525+. Plus. To be fair, the DS1525 Plus does support adding a Synology expansion unit via its USB Type-C expansion port, but in terms of raw connectivity and flexibility, the Ugreen really did offer more connectivity out of the box. As mentioned earlier, the growing price to performance gap between Synology and its competitors started to become more and more obvious as well as annoying. Synology has always charged a premium, and for years I felt that premium was partly justified by DSM's polish and their rock-solid reliability, uh, but over the past few hardware generations, their hardware gap has widened in a way that's honestly kind of insulting. I mean, when you compare similarly priced models, Synology consistently ships older gen CPUs, less RAM, lower bandwidth networking, and limited expandability, as we mentioned, while competitors like QNAP and Ugreen deliver much more more modern hardware, better efficiency at a similar price point. For example, Synology's 2Bay DS225 Plus, which was released in the U.S. around July 2025, and it ships with a 2019 Celeron J4125 and has only 2 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and 1 gigabit Ethernet port, and it's listed for about $359 on Micro Center. The alternative Ugreen 2Bay DXP2800, available in March of 2025, includes a 2023, so four years more current, Intel N100 CPU paired with 8 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and a 2.5 gigabit for $10 less at $349. That's kind of crazy. And this isn't a one-off case, it's become a pattern. With Synology, you're paying a premium for previous generation processors, but then paying extra for things like 10 gigabit expansion cards, RAN upgrades, uh, NVMe support that's restricted to cache only, and now even storage compatibility because you were forced to buy their branded drives. Meanwhile, Ugreen gives you more I.O. ports, much faster 10 gigabit ports, NVMe storage pools, modern CPUs, and generous RAM right out of the box. At some point, you have to start asking yourself, you know, what this Synology tax is really buying you. I was in sales for over 15 years. I'm a value proposition guy. Uh, for my usage, the extra cost simply didn't make sense anymore. Ugreen gives much more bang for your buck, and that's hard to argue with, especially in a home lab where performance and value matter just as much as software polish. As mentioned earlier, Synology's biggest strength has always been its software ecosystem. Synology's Disk Station Management, or DSM, is extremely polished, and Synology offers a deep suite of first-party apps such as its Synology Drive, Photos, Hyper Backup, Active Backup for Business, uh, Synology Office, to name a few, and their apps are very tightly integrated, making the experience feel cohesive and sort of Apple-like, uh, which is where their premium price comes from. Ugreen's ecosystem, by comparison, while newer, is already surprisingly capable. Their app store is smaller than Synology's, but it covers the essentials like file sharing, snapshots, cloud sync, backups, synchronization, virtual machines, Docker containers, dedicated media streaming apps, and an actually an awesome mobile app. 
I'll be honest, there are things I miss about Synology. You know, their software is super easy to use. It's very turnkey. It's very cohesive. It's got tons of apps. For a long time, that alone made the higher price worth it for me, uh, which is why I stuck with them for so many years. But honestly, the price point from Yugen was just a no-brainer for me. The hardware just gives you much more room to grow. And the one thing that really surprised me, as I mentioned, that I really liked is their mobile app. Ugreen's app isn't just for checking in on the NAS, it's a full setup tool. I unboxed it, plugged it in, and did the entire initial setup from my phone, setting up storage pools, RAID users, um, all without even opening up a laptop, and that's super cool. In the end, it really just comes down to what you need. I'm not here to say that Ugreen is better than Synology for everyone. Um, Synology feels a lot like Apple. Um, it's turnkey, more polished, easy to use, but that convenience is going to come at a premium. Ugreen is more open, gives you much stronger hardware, and leaves a lot more room to grow. Uh, if you like flexibility and fewer guardrails, that's where it really shines and made the most sense for me. Anyway, that is going to wrap up another video, tech fans. If you found this helpful in your quest to find a new NAS or upgrade a current NAS, please let me know your thoughts in the comments and what NAS or backup system you're using. Also make sure that you click on the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And if you'd like to support me, please consider visiting my Patreon where I have a lot of behind the scenes videos and walkthroughs of many of my tutorials. As always, a special shout out to my loyal Patreon supporters and a heartfelt thank you to all of you for watching. We'll be talking to you again very soon.